welcome to From Dublin to Cleveland. I am your host, Logan Howard. This is episode, a milestone achievement, a round of applause for everyone. Um, yes, we've made it 10 episodes. Uh, Brendan, how are you doing today? How is the... Uh... Great, always great. And I absolutely cannot believe that we've been doing this for 10 weeks straight. I don't remember the last thing that I have done for 10 weeks straight. <laughs> Other than breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Which helps. It has been. Um, has been quite good and it's been going well. Yeah. So, to in honor of our 10th tenth, uh, tenth episode... Um, I'm going to open us up with uh, some thing, some phrases that use the the word ten or number ten. So I'm sure a lot of you. Uh, I'm just. I'm going to ask Brandon. Brandon quickly. Um, what does hang ten mean? If if you you know what does it mean? <laughs> I know what hang man is. <laughs> um, it's a surfing thing. My uh, so a surfer rides with. All ten toes draped over the front edge of the surfboard. Um, so for this to be accomplished, it's necessary for the back end of the board to be in the waves so that the wet water will hold it down. Um, so before you hang ten, you might want to try hanging five, just five, you know, toes over the edge, um, and it's a lot easier. Um, and so hang ten, it dates back to 1960s. It's the same decade that I... Annette. Funcello began starring in a number of beach movies, and I guess that's sort of why they call it Hang Ten. The next expression is, I wouldn't touch it or him with a ten-foot pole. That oh, I do know this me. one. Yeah, so you don't like someone, you don't trust them, and you're saying is stay away. Yeah, um, so it conveys contempt or extreme dislike. Originally, a ten-foot pole was simply to measure distance, uh, the famed 19th century songwriter Stephen Foster used to describe the depth of a mud hole in his popular song Camp Town Races, which contains the lyrics, De blind hoses sticking in the mud hole. <laughs> Can't touch the bottom with a 10-foot pole all the live long day <laughs> in 1884. American author William Dean Howells used the phrase metaphorically um, in one of his novels to characterize a person in the declaration, do you suppose a fellow like young Corey brought up in the way he's been would touch mineral paint with a 10-foot pole. It was also in the late 19th century that the slangy phrase, wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole, emerged with a sense of unwillingness to involve oneself with a person or a thing. Yeah, I'm not going to remember any of that, but it's going to wake up tomorrow morning. <laughs> uh, the last one is a 10-gallon hat. Something swanky. Fancy, pristine, not something you buy at, like, you know, your local St. Vincent's charity store or the secondhand shop. Mm. Okay. Um, it's, a cow it's just a cowboy hat in, since the 1900s. The likeliest and most uh, obvious explanation for gallon being used in this way is that the hat, just like the gallon measurement, was extremely large, perhaps the largest hat in the West. Um, but just as the word pint is often used to describe what is smaller than average, as in pint-sized or half-pint, gallon came to signify what's larger than average or even enormous. Large cowboy hats thus became known as 10-gallon hats. There you go. Those are my, uh, my phrases. Um, words of 10 as we're celebrating the 10th episode. Um, with that, I and will turn it over to And the award for the giver Brendan. of the most useless information for today goes to... Howard. Round of applause. I salute you. I salute you. Now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So you may possibly remember that in our last episode, Logan saw fit to absolutely torture me with American slang idioms and expressions, and I had to guess their meanings. So I think it is only fair that I return the favor by giving him Irish words and phrases, and he has to guess their meaning. So, first one is... <laughs> and this is one he hears me use all the time, but he's never once asked me what it means. Crack. Um, I'm going to say that it has something to do with... Uh... 
them being on drugs or stuff like that? <laughs> Not in Irish, it doesn't. <laughs> in Irish, it means news, story, information. So our conversations usually begin with, Ah, oh, well, man, how are you? What the crack? Or, have you any crack? <laughs> <laughs> that sentence can get you arrested in your homeland. <laughs> have you a story? Have you news? <laughs> you have any okay. newsworthy information <laughs> worth sharing? <laughs> but, uh... Usually, if I feel like I've been talking for too long, and I just want to end the sentence, I usually just say something like, and all that crack, <laughs> and all that news, and all that information, and all those stories. Okay. So, uh, it's a word we use very expansively, but uh, at its root, it's about uh, fun, newsworthy stories. <laughs> all right. <laughs> T-shock. It looks like Taoiseach. It's pronounced t -shock. I'm starting to realize that it's not so much that it makes sense in, like, English. Like, because if, I, if I was immediately thinking, I would just be like, T-Shock would be, like, a thunderstorm, a feeling of fear due to a thunderstorm. That That's uh, that's what I would say. It's, that is the feeling the T-Shock might give you. It's our prime <laughs> minister. <laughs> Interesting. So yes, we tend to feel a lot of shock and need a cup of tea after hearing some of his uh, nonsensical uh, blathering ideas. But uh, he's our prime minister. All right, um, Shakti Dala. It sounds like they stole it sort of from Spanish. Like it feels like it's a Spanish tweaking of this word. They went, we'll end it with la. And we'll say it is either French or it is Spanish. We'll say one of the, one of them. It's, it's sort of like that. Um, I'm gonna say it has like the the like to teach. So like this to teach someone something. They're actually our members of parliament. Members of parliament. So the Chakti Dala are the okay. people that we vote into office to help govern the country. Interesting. Interesting. This is one you may possibly have seen an English spelling of. It is Puka. Um, I don't think I have, actually. So uh, I'm going to say it's like pouch, like something to carry something in, a pouch. No, it is a ghost. Okay, what about this one? Ban she. Ban she. It's used it's used over here in America, but I don't know if it means something different. Yeah, it's a supernatural creature. Because ban okay. which we spell B E A N is a woman. If she appears to you and goes she is wailing okay. because your death is imminent. Okay, what about this one? Full word is guard the Shiakana. It's somebody who likes protects other people, so like <laughs> Very good, yeah. Kupon pay. Kupon pay. Every Irish person's favorite thing. I'm gonna say Food. It's some. It's it's a food related thing, and I'm just gonna say it's food in general. <laughs> um, it's not quite food. It, it, it's a liquid, though. Cup on pay. Oh, so, so it's ale, like beer. Say it in kind of like stuff. you know an American accent or a British accent. It's like liquor. <laughs> It's as addictive as liquor. <laughs> so tea. A is cup it of tea? tea. A cup of tea. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, gob. Um, 
I'm just going to hazard a guess that it means God? <laughs> no. Uh, but God has one. <laughs> or three, if you look at it in a certain way. It's mouth. Shut your gob. Shut your mouth. That makes sense. Ah, uh, that's a good, strong Irish word. Hooligan. Hooligan. <laughs> we use that over here. It's someone who's like a miscreant, someone who does something that uh, you probably don't want them to be doing. They're just, they're just there and they're not, they're probably not, they're probably doing something illegal or something that's not good. Hello. The first time I heard, the first time you said that, it sounded like it was the Lord in, and you just said it really fast, but it's galore, so, um, yep. uh, I don't, I, 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 galore, it sounds like, um, glory maybe, is what I would say. No, it means in abundance. In abundance. In English, the spelling is G A L O R E. So um, you might say, "Oh, um, I want money galore. I want lots and lots of money. Money in abundance." Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, with this word, dig, as in, do you dig me? Dig. Ah, you dig me. Um, do you, like, get along with me, enjoy my presence, sort of? Is that, is that what it means? It means, do you understand me? The irony being. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll just do a couple more. And, yeah. okay, this is one sentence. Dia ditch. And the next sentence is, dia is for a ditch. And if you're feeling really, really cheeky, Diaz, what I see as the ditch. I threw him into a ditch, I threw her into a ditch, and I threw her mom into a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what that ditch ever do to you? <laughs> <laughs> You know, up until the th up until the third one, you were getting the subjects right anyway. Uh, <laughs> so Dia is God, Ditch is okay. you. So Dia Ditch, God be with you. It's how we say hello. And the appropriate okay. response is Dia is what a Ditch, God and Mary be with you. So you're giving them an even bigger hello. But if that cheeky rapscallion starts off with a Dias Wurditch, you have to add another person. So, you, for instance, you might say something like Dias Wurditch, God, Mary, and Jesus be with you. And if they really want to push your buttons, they might welcome you with the Lord God, Mary, and Jesus. So, you'd have to say something like Dias Wurditch, it's Padrick Ditch. Where you throw St. Patrick into the mix. <laughs> so basically, oh, oh, one up, whatever the first person says, just means hello. <laughs> and uh, that's All one. Right, one more. One Slow more. Nat. Slow nat. Like, lots of peace? That is not too far off. Lant hmm. is another word for you. Because you okay. cannot say slan ditch. It would be it has to be it's gotta be slan lat. Certain pronouns go to certain expressions. But um yeah, slan is health. So health be with you. It's how we say goodbye. So essentially you're saying oh, don't okay. die between today and when we next meet. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Good job. Well done. Good, good. I feel like I did better than expected. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm impressed actually with uh, your rendition of Salon Lats. It's good. 
Um, all right, so to end off our time together, we're going to be in Exodus 14, um, verses 1 and 2. Um, so I will read that really quickly for us. Um, now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before Pi Haroth, uh, between Midagol and the sea, opposite Baal Zephron. You shall camp before it by the sea. Period. End of two verses. And you're immediately going, what do all those places have to do with anything? Um, that's the part of the Bible that I skip and I don't read and I don't pay attention to because it's a bunch of names and I can't pronounce them. And you would be correct. We don't probably don't pronounce them correctly. Um, but this, this, these two voices, these two verses are very important because it, it's God giving the children of Israel some instruction of where to go. Um, now, for those of us who aren't Jewish, we don't have a great idea of where this is. And for those of us who don't live in the Middle East, we don't have an idea of what, you know, what this looks like. Um, but he tells them to go to the Red Sea and camp by these two, um, these two places. And these two places are hill, are, are like mountain ranges that are uh, along the sides of each side. And there's no good way to ford the Red Sea here. Um, and then there's desert. So it's sort of like desert on one side, mountain on another side, mountain on the other side, and then the sea. And you would, you would immediately start to think, why would God lead them here? Because doesn't that seem like a trap? Like, this seems like a place that they shouldn't be. They shouldn't, like, be in. Um, and that they're, they don't belong there. Like, God's putting them in a between a rock and a hard place. Um, and then, of course, as you as we read down the story, you see that Pharaoh shows up and with his army and goes, hey, we can get them because they're trapped. They can't get away. Um, and you would say, yeah, God has put them in a really bad position. Like, what is he doing? You would probably question why he would make this choice. And the reason he puts them here is because only he's the one who can save them from the situation. They aren't getting away by themselves. They can't swim across. They can't get boats because they've just come out of Egypt and they don't have boats. They can't get across this without God intervening. And as if you continue reading the story, it talks about how God helps them to walk across on dry land and parts the sea. A huge miracle that only God can do. It can't. That's not something that science has been able to come up with and refeed it and part waters and so you can walk across on dry land. Only God can do that. Um, so that's, that's the thing that I want everyone to learn from this passage is God puts us in difficult positions sometimes, whether that's through persecution, whether that's through some of our poor choices, um, whether that's just whatever it is, sometimes we are in tough positions and we're tough places and God puts us there for a reason. It isn't for us to, we don't always know what that reason is. Sometimes only he knows. But he puts us there for a reason. And sometimes it's for it, it's for him to do something awesome. Sometimes it's for us to uh, work work our way out of it. But most of the time it's for him to do something awesome and for him to get glory from it. That's the most important thing. Is he gets glory because he gets to show, show and do something awesome that you haven't seen in history before. Um, so that's why I picked those two verses this uh, today whenever you're listening to it. Um, Brendan, anything you'd like to add to it? Yeah, I love that. Um, I say I'm, I'm a little bit livid that you used the idiom that I wanted to between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> I generally didn't think that you were going to use that before I had a chance. <laughs> and I was like, sugar, <laughs> Jesus, what do I say now? When you wear this bag, I'm sure you'll just like, see my eye twitch or something. Um, <laughs> you know, you know. I think um, the, over the last couple of years, as a world, we've been between a rock and a hard place. Uh, you know, with um, mask mandates, vaccine mandates, people calling each other terrorists for no good reason, um, violence, just seeing people go back crap cray cray. Um, seeing people just fly out the handle and go off the wall, throw sand to the wind. But honestly, um, from Dublin to Cleveland, from my nation, yours, anyone under the sound of our voices, 
I want you to be encouraged that God is going to use all of this to his glory. I know right now it just looks like people have gone insane and the lunatics have taken over the asylum and we're living in very dark days. So many in the body of Christ have just given up. They've <laughs> rolled out their rapture rugs and like, Jesus, take me now. Um, just waiting for it all to end for the end of days. But honestly, I believe the best days in this earth are still ahead because it's at times like this when God shows up because he gets the maximum glory because no one else can save us. But the Egyptians behind us with destruction on their minds, mountains on either side, that you can't go over them, you can't go under them, you can't go around them, a Red Sea before you, you've got no boat that, that's going to get you across. So I encourage you all to focus on what the Lord said to Moses in that situation. The Israelites were freaking out and the Lord emphasized, yo Moses, you still got your staff, hello. And people, we still have the cross of Jesus. So just as Moses lifted that staff on high and God moved, I want you all to lift the cross of Jesus high over your situation, over your circumstance, over your predicament, over your nation, and say, God, I speak on behalf of my nation. And I say, God, be glorified. God, I give you permission to work all things together for good. And surely we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, so to close us out today, uh, again, if you need, if you'd like to get a hold of us and have some comments or things that you'd like us to, maybe an idea or something you've got, uh, don't hesitate to send us an email to uh, lhawa 62 wgu uh, at, at wgu.edu. Um, if you, we have our website now. Um, we are now on Google and Apple Podcasts, so you can listen to us on those platforms too. Leave us a review on those. Um, and uh, have hope, I hope you all have a wonderful and great rest of your day whenever you're listening to this. Um, anything you'd like to add, Brendan? <laughs> I still can't believe we're on Apple and Google. Like, when did that happen? <laughs> I'm basking. All right. Well, uh, we will see you all next time. And uh, have a good day. Bye. Bye, friends.